Hi, I am Audumbar Patkar and this is lecture 8 of the Model Water. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about one more important water softening process that is geolite process, also called as permeated process. Chemically, geolite is hydrated form of sodium aluminosilicate. This geolite is having capacity to exchange its sodium ions reversibly for hardness producing ions from water. This property makes geolite very useful for water softening process. Chemical structure of geolite can be represented as like this. Geolite is available in the natural form or can be prepared synthetically. Mostly synthetic geolites are used because of their higher exchange capacity per unit weight. Let's see how the actual process works. Here you can see the diagram for geolite softener. This is inlet for hard water, geolite bed which is rested on gravels, this is outlet for soft water and this is brine solution for regeneration of the geolite bed. For softening process Hard water is percolated at specified rate through a bed of geolite. When water passes through this geolite bed, hardness causing ions like calcium or magnesium are retained by this geolite as calcium geolite or magnesium geolite. Hence, the outgoing water is free from such salts. That means we will get soft water. This can be understood better by the help of reactions. These are calcium salts present in hard water. And this is fixed bed of sodium geolite. When we pass the hard water containing calcium salts, exchange of ions takes place. These sodium ions from sodium geolite get replaced by calcium ions from water, and we will get water that is free from calcium salts. However, this sodium geolite get converted to calcium geolite. Similarly, magnesium ions can be removed by using geolite bed and will get soft water. Only one problem with this process is we will get soft water but this water contains large amount of sodium salts as you can see here. After some time this sodium geolite get completely converted into calcium geolite and magnesium geolite and it fails to soften the water that means it get exhausted as no sodium ions available for exchange at this stage the supply of hard water is stopped and the exhausted geolite is 
regenerated by treating the bed with 10% NaCl solution. Let's see how it works. This exhausted zeolite bed which is in the form of calcium zeolite or magnesium zeolite will get converted to again in sodium zeolite form when we pass 10% of NaCl solution through this bed. Washings containing calcium chloride and magnesium chloride are led to drain and regenerated zeolite bed thus obtained used again for softening process. Here are some advantages of the process. The process has to remove the hardness almost completely and water of about 10 ppm residual hardness is obtained. The process automatically adjusts itself for variation in hardness of incoming water. That means we do not have to calculate the hardness of water previously. The equipment used is compact and occupying a small space. No impurities are precipitated. As you can see, only exchange of ions takes place here. So there is no danger of sludge formation. It requires less skill for maintenance as well as operation. And here are some of the disadvantages. The treated water contains more sodium salts. As we learn the reactions. So this is the real disadvantage of the process. High turbidity water cannot be treated efficiently by this method because suspended particles present in the turbid water may block the active sites of the zeolite bed. The method only replaces calcium and magnesium ions by sodium ions but leaves all acidic ions as such in the softened water. As we saw the reactions, these anions or acidic ions are present in the form of sodium salts in the water. Colored ions such as manganese and iron must be removed first as these ions produce manganese zeolite or iron zeolite which cannot be easily regenerated. So the second one no problem with this process. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.